Well, that was certainly a wonderful worship service. Praise God. I, I feel his spirit's here today to really bring us to a, another level. I had a scripture in Psalms 127. Uh, this came to me uh, Friday night during the prayer meeting. We had a really good time of fellowship Friday night. I believe the Lord's really helping us, and it's, it's in relation to what the Lord is doing. And I thought I'd just read this scripture. I, I don't know if the smile of the Lord or not, if it isn't, and hopefully the Lord will correct it and bring it back where it's supposed to be. I thought I'd just read this. Unless the Lord builds a house, its builders labor in vain. Right off the bat there, the builders are still building, but if they're not building a house according to the Lord's plan, the labor is all in vain. Unless the Lord watches over the city, the watchmen stand guard in vain. I mean, you watch it over something. If it ain't the Lord, you're, watching, you're wasting your time. In vain you rise early and stay up late, toiling for food to eat. For he grants sleep to those he loves. Sons are a heritage from the Lord. Children are a reward from him. Like arrows in the hands of a warrior are sons born in one's youth. Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. You know, the Lord's building a church. He's building a body. And it's, it's, it's not a fleshly body. It's a spiritual body. It's a body that as we grow together, our heritage is going to be sons that will go forth in this land and take this heritage, spiritually take this heritage on and on and on. I don't mean just today and tomorrow, but till the Lord comes. Till he comes and brings his house under one roof and takes us to the heavenlies. God is bringing us to a place. And I believe it's, it's I can see the beginning of it. I can see the fruit of it. I can see the, the buds blossoming on the trees. I see the, the flowers spreading out. That God is beginning to work in our hearts. To bring us to a place to where, as this scripture says, Blessed is a man whose quiver is full of them. It's talking about arrows. That's children of God. They will not be put to shame when they contend with their enemies in the gate. That means God is going to raise the standard. And he's going to use his people. We're coming headlong into a desolate land. The Lord is withdrawing himself from our nation because our nation has withdrawn itself from him. And I think we're going to see times ahead when we're going to have to reach down deep to stand on the word because it's being taken away from us slowly and surely. This word that we stand on, that we take for granted, it's being diluted. It's being, uh, it's being raped. It's being changed. It's being fixed to where it's no longer the word of God. It's been turned into something else. And God has chosen his people to stand on the word. The spiritual word, the word that can bring us and sustain us through the, what's to come. I think we need to keep our swords sharp. I think we need to not we be ready to take them out of our sheath to be able to use the word that God has given us. And I'm not, not talking about just the written word. I'm talking about that word that has to be hid away in our hearts. That word that, that finds a way to come into our mind right when we need it. Right in the heat of battle. Right when we're facing some of the dark hours that we're facing. That word springs up and it's life. That's when that apple falls off the tree and you pick it up and it sustains you yet one more day. I, just, I don't know if this is the mind of the Lord, but it's uh, Friday night was a good night. The Lord met with us. I believe it was the beginning of, of, of what's to come in, in our body, of the body that the Lord is building. I believe he's bringing us to a place to where he's renewing our mind. He's creating within us that right heart. He's given us a desire to know him in a way we haven't known him, to, to be in union with him, to be in fellowship with him in ways that we haven't been. And I believe as we wait on the Lord, he's going to give us the strength that we're waiting on. He's going to renew our minds. He's going to give us that heart that's fleshy, a heart of compassion. I say, Lord, give me a heart of compassion for my brothers and those sisters, that I'll be ready, willing, and able to do those things that you put in my hand, that I'll be able to see the things that need to be done, not just to wait to be told, 
but then in my heart I'll be ready to do them, that I'll see them, and that Joel mentioned something about being able to teach. Sometimes I have to refer back to what Phil says. Sometimes we teach without saying a word. We teach by the life we live. Help God, to, God help us to, to live that life that teaches, not just with, with the voice of, of saying things, but to do and to be what God's called us to be, faithful in the cause that he's brought us to. Praise God. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, I don't know this morning. I, it might be that the Lord just wanted me to get up here just for mere confirmation. Uh, I don't know. But, uh, Robert, uh, I had that same scripture. I had it, my Bible open to Psalm 127 right there. And it came to me before the service, and it just kept coming back and forth in my mind, you know, to keep rolling over. And um, I believe this is the Lord. And I believe that the Lord's doing a, a wonderful work in this day and hour in which we live. And, folks, you know, God loves us this morning. He's a loving God, and everything he's doing for us in this hour right now is good. I don't care what we're going through, what we're facing. We've heard this over and over again. We need to keep hearing it. We need to keep reminding ourselves. We need to get up in the morning and realize that our God is with us, and he's never going to leave us. He's never going to forsake us, and he's going to be with us right to the very end. Uh, and I was thinking about this house. You know, this is just not an ordinary house. God is a very selective God, and he's, he is choosing people that he can inhabit and that he can dwell in and that he can get glory from. And I just want to give him glory this morning. I want to give him the praise that's due his name. Because there's, no there's no other name under heaven in this earth today whereby we're going to be saved except through Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the way, he is the truth, he's the life, and no man comes unto the Father except by him. And he's building this house today. I'm persuaded of it. And it's a wonderful thing. He's building it for a habitation. He's going to dwell with us. He's going to be with us. And unless, verse 1, unless the Lord builds the house, its builders labor in vain. This is God's, we're, we're his workmanship, folks. It's God that's doing this thing. You know, Noah, back in the, you know, back in the days of Noah there, in his time, the revelation, God gave him a revelation and told him to build an ark. And there's safety in that ark. And God's doing the same for us today. There's safety in this house that we live in. There's safety in this church. There's safety in the midst of counseling. There's safety. And, and when we gather together and when we humble ourselves and seek his face, God comes and he, he dwells, Scripture says he dwells with them that are of a humble and a contrite spirit and what? Tremble at his word. The very word of God. That's what the, God has spoken. He is speaking in this hour and I want to hear from him. I want to follow him, folks, because it's our life. 